Hi and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Now, I'm going to take a look at some of these mini FPV transmitters, 5.8 gigahertz, and I'm going to show you why I'm buying them in lots of three for review purposes. Because as you well know, or many people now know, um, I bought this FPV transmitter a while ago, and I tested it and it worked really well. I was quite impressed with it. But then people contacted me and said, hey, I've got those and they have lines in them. And I thought, that's odd, so I bought some more. And the several of the other ones I bought did have lines in them. And it turns out there's a little issue with the power supply. If we look at the back of this board, I'll just go to the macro so you can see more closely. On these cheap 200 milliwatt transmitters, you'll see there's a little power supply area here. What this does is it takes the input voltage, which can be in some of these up to six cells, chops it up into small bits, and then puts it back together as a lower voltage. So we have a coil, some capacitors, and a little switch mode controller down here. One of the problems is that because you're chopping up the input voltage into small pulses and then making it back into DC, you get noise. And th on this particular design, there are two capacitors here which are designed to filter out the noise, but the value of these, these are probably quite cheap ones, and the value of these capacitors has varied wildly from sample to sample, which is why some seem to work without noise and others have a noise problem. So I'm going to do a little mod on here, um, try putting some extra capacitance on here to see if I can get rid of that noise. That's another project coming up, but there you go. That's uh, an example of why I want to have more than one of an object or one of, one of a product to review it, because there's sometimes quite a variety. And, now this is the one, the original one I reviewed, you can see the number on there, it's what is it, a, a TS5823. And I saw another one on the market, which was this one, the FT952, and it's the same, it's 200 milliwatts. In fact, they use the same little module, inside here there's a little module and a little tin cam, they use the same module, the only difference is the bits on the back, the electronics on here, that create the power supply and allow you to switch channels and so forth. And as you can see, there is a difference between those two. The, uh, the new one has a lot more capacitors. These orange things here are called uh, tantalum capacitors. There's a lot more of those in there. And so the power supply area is quite a bit better. And I bought one of these and it worked really well, but I was not fooled. I thought, ah, I shall buy some more and just make sure there isn't the same sort of issues of consistency from one to another. And it's just as well I did because look what I found. Now these are a pretty well laid out board and they seem to be quite well built. But I was looking and I spotted this thing here. Look, you notice this thing at an angle. That's a ceramic capacitor. And I thought, oh, what's happened there? Has the machine that picks and places the components dropped an odd component on this board because it's at an angle and it's got blobs of solder on the end? Just doesn't look like it is supposed to be there. And it's under the clear plastic heat shrink, as you can see. So it's not something that's uh, fallen on later. It's obviously been there during the pick and place and the soldering operation. And I thought, hmm. So. I had a look at one of the other ones that I bought, and sure enough, same thing. So it looks like it's a bit of a, an official bodge for some reason. Maybe they also found that there was a uh, need for extra capacitance across here, and these ceramic capacitors are different to the tantalum ones. They usually don't have as much capacitance, but they work better at higher frequencies. So high frequency noise is best dealt with with these ceramic capacitors, low frequency noise with the tantalums, the orange ones. But then I got the third one out of the box, and I was a little bit gobsmacked because here's the third one. Do you notice anything? That component is actually missing off this one. So these two, they came from the same batch. I bought them in the same order. And I'll just stand them up this way so you can see the difference. Here we go. This one has the bodge capacitor. This one doesn't. So what's going on? Where's the consistency? I have a feeling that if I try this one, it'll have noise. And if I try this one, it won't have noise, or at least not as much, because it's got this extra component. Two of them had the extra component, one of them didn't. They're exactly the same product, out of exactly the same batch, in exactly the same order, from exactly the same supplier. So, ah, oh, makes you pull your hair out. If I had any hair, I'd pull it out. This is the kind of thing that makes it really hard to do these reviews, because I find it difficult to base a review on a single sample. So now I'm going to have to get two or three of everything just to make sure that when I say it's a good product and you go and buy it, it isn't that I just got a good one. Or if I say it's a bad product and you buy it and you say, hey, it's great. So I'm going to have to spend a lot more money buying multiple instances of a lot of these products just to make sure we don't get the situation where two out of three have a bit and the third one has a bit missing and maybe they perform completely differently. So there you go, just a quick video to let you know what I have to deal with here on the review bench. It's not always as simple as it looks. And look for a review of these coming up very soon. I'll be showing you what the footage looks like, and we'll see whether that little capacitor actually makes any difference. Um, 
because I don't think they'd have put it in if it didn't. You know, I mean, any manufacturer is going to say, if we don't need a part, we're going to leave it out. So they're not going to go along and actually physically bodge in those extra components if they don't have to, because that's extra time, extra money, and it hits your profits. So, yeah, work it out. So thanks for watching. If you've got questions, put them on the bottom of the video. Comments, do the same. I'll do my best to answer them. And if, if you've bought one of those, one of these uh, video transmitters, this is the FT952, have a look. Does yours have that capacitor or doesn't it?